like and subscribe for daily updates. First time for a rookie to get a triple double in franchise history. <laughs> Number 22, Caitlin Clark. She's got one of the hottest selling jerseys in sports, y'all. According to Fanatics, led by the one and only Michael Rubin, Clark's Indiana Fever jersey is apparently sold out in all sizes. The Indiana Fever have shared some astonishing figures about their brand's expansion since Caitlin Clark joined the team this season. First time for a rookie to get a triple double in franchise history. <laughs> One particular statistic about video views is truly eye-opening. But in addition to the jersey sales, Clark now has an eight-year, $28 million deal with Nike that will include her own signature shoe. The deal is the richest sponsorship contract for a women's basketball player. She deserves it! it. She deserves it! Now let me say something to all the ladies out there. Somebody coming along and elevating the sports shine ultimately benefits you. Go out there, compete with her, try to bust her up if you want to and all of that stuff. Just don't hate on the acclaim that she's getting. They have surpassed the NFL, the powerhouse that usually dominates in all areas. I must say the Indiana Fever deserves some recognition for actively promoting Caitlin Clark for Rookie of the Year. Apparently, all the accolades that Caitlin Clark is receiving is because she's white and the jealous players who are attacking her are really the, the real victims here. Yeah? I just love that she tries to stay grounded and she says she doesn't, what did she say, she doesn't have a social, she doesn't look at her social and I get it, I, I, I don't either and I think it's so important to just to continue to do what she's doing and no matter what other people do, then um, if people are negative it's because they can't do what you do which is well-deserved. It was surprising to see that despite all the Fever's posts, there was a noticeable absence of content featuring Clark. I was just trying to get out of there and didn't see her and kind of collided pretty good. And then we kind of just both fell over. Kind of scary, could have caused a pretty serious injury to me and knocked the win out of me, but luckily my teammates kind of picked me up and got me off the court. And their AD already came and apologized to me, so I really appreciate that. And. Um, you know, that's just what comes with the territory. If it were up to me, nearly everything would highlight her. Yet this data has emerged. The fever revealed impressive statistics regarding fan engagement this season. So remind me again how Angel Ree and Aja Wilson are the ones making a difference. Live you might remember this scene from Monday's Elite Eight post game in Albany. We had it live here on CBS 2 and Fox 28. That girl getting her shoes signed by Caitlin and that's the appropriate reaction. <laughs> On Saturday, I was like, there's no way I get her autograph. She's such a big deal. There's going to be people lined up down there. Like, it's it's insane. But on Monday, I was like determined. I was saying before the game, I'm going to get this autograph. It's going to happen. And everybody's like, I hope you do. I got down there and I was wearing Nike blazer. Not at all. The Fever are gearing up for the second half of the WNBA season after the All-Star and Olympic break. This year, they have significantly elevated fan engagement throughout the league. The Fever currently lead in attendance for both home and away games, with over 186,000 fans attending home games since the season began in May, marking the highest total in the franchise's history. You came last night. Yeah. You're a Mystics fan, yeah. but I see the Indiana shirt. So what are we doing here? I like Caitlin Clark more. And a staggering 265% increase from last year. For home games have set new single game records for merchandise sales at the GameBridge Fieldhouse Team Store, which has seen a remarkable jump of over 1,000% in net sales. The Fever rank first in the league for social media engagement, video views, new followers, and total followers.
feel like I was just that little girl. Like I grew up around the game. I was those little girls. I was always begging my dad to take me to basketball games, college basketball games. No matter what it was really, I always wanted to be around the, the game. I'm most proud of is how humble she's remained through it all. Since April, they have amassed over 800 million video views across all platforms, outpacing teams in the WNBA, NBA, NFL, NHL and MLB in video consumption during this period. But it's the way she is off the court that makes her a role model. You know, I think that was the most kids we've really had all season today. The tunnel was just packed with kids and, you know, I try to make time to high five every single one of them. And, you know, that's really what it's all about, um, inspiring the next generation. And I think our team does a tremendous job of that. I've been saying that Caitlin Clark might be the biggest sports star in the country. And this data certainly supports that claim. When your video views exceed those of the WNBA, NBA or the NFL, an entity that typically reigns supreme, that's truly remarkable. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was so fun. The atmosphere was amazing. It's the first time I had seen Clark play in person. I wish she made more than a couple threes. She was two of 10, I think, from distance, but her playmaking ability was what uh, really impressed me. What was it? 12 assists, nine rebounds, just one shy of the first ever career triple-double for a rookie in the WNBA. The fans were excited. I just love the excitement and the positivity that continues to build. The Fever are at the top of the WNBA with 38 national TV games this season, and they've already set network viewership records for 10 of their broadcasts on platforms like ESPNI, CBS, and NBA TV. In fact, one of their games became the most watched WNBA matchup in 23 years. But the fans were excited to see her. We got a competitive game to the final ticks, which is what fans really wanted. Those 800 million video views are truly astounding. But seriously, how can anyone claim that others in the league are responsible for this growth? It's just absurd. The stats clearly show that attendance and ratings don't support that narrative, plus the actual revenue from fans willing to pay extra to see. Caitlin Clark is significant and speaks volumes. Caitlin Clark has also shared her thoughts about potentially joining Angel Reese in the new women's basketball league. Unrivaled. This league aims to give WNBA players the opportunity to earn enough during the offseason so they won't have to play overseas. Unrivaled will feature 30 players in a 3x their format with six teams, all based in Miami. Some well-known players, including Angel Reese, Kelsey Plum, and Jewel Lloyd will participate, and they've even secured a nil deal with Paige Byers from UConn. While Clark hasn't ruled out playing in the league, she emphasized her current focus. Honestly, I'm just focused on this right now. One thing at a time can't always just be moving on to the next. My focus is right here, she said. I mean, I think just having experience under my belt, like coming in, we didn't have much practice at all. We, I mean, we've had more practice over the course of these last two and a half weeks than we did really to start the season. So I think that just in, within itself, and then obviously we've already played 26 games. So um, I know they call it the second half of the season, but really like, there's only 14 games left to, you know, make a difference in your record and make a playoff push for us. So I think that's the, the most important part is like, really there's, there's only a month. There's only a month and every single game is going to matter um, for us. And luckily enough, we got quite a few of those at home. So you, you really need to focus down and be able to like, get quite a few wins. Good. The league is reportedly offering an average salary of $250,000 for its players, which is over $100,000 more than what WNBA players typically earn. Many top stars from the WNBA have opted to play overseas during the offseason to boost their earnings, as the best players in the league make around $250,000 a season. A number of high-profile athletes, including Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino, Carmelo Anthony, and Steve Nash have financially supported the league, which was founded by Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart. As for Clark, her attention remains on the WNBA, which is set to resume after the Olympic break. This week, she has been instrumental in revitalizing the Fever, who currently hold an 11, 15 record and sit in seventh place in the WNBA standings just ahead of the Chicago sky. So there you have it. It's a classic. I'm not ready to answer that right now situation. 
I mentioned the other day that I doubt she'll join this league because she's not facing the same financial struggles that many of these players are now are any of these athletes in dire straits. Not really since they're heading overseas where some are raking in half a million or even a million dollars a year, for instance. Brittany Griner was reportedly earning around a million annually in Russia for six or seven seasons before her arrest for cannabis oil. WNBA star Brittany Griner convicted today on drug charges in Russia. A judge sentencing her to nine years in a penal colony. Griner detained in Russia for more than five months, found guilty of intentionally smuggling vape cartridges of hashish oil into the country. She addressed the judge before the verdict was announced, holding a photo of her team in Russia, telling the judge she, quote, made an honest mistake. President Biden calling her sentence unacceptable, and the administration is again urging Russia to accept its prisoner proposal. I found it hard to feel sympathy for her because she had been there long enough to know the rules. What's intriguing is how many players will choose this new league over the lucrative offers they can still get overseas. Sure, they might be offering $250,000. But if a country like China or Germany throws out a $750,000 deal, I think most would go for the higher paycheck. Then there's Paige Bookers who's touted as the next big star entering the league. I personally doubt she'll make a significant impact, but much will depend on her performance in the NCAA tournament next year. The fact that she's already part of the league through a nil deal is interesting. If they want this league to thrive, they need to get Caitlin Clark involved because, based on the data, it seems like viewership will be lacking without her to put things in perspective. Las Vegas Aces games are pulling in about half a million viewers, while the Indiana Fever are attracting around 2 million. More than 20,000 fans at T-Mobile Arena on Tuesday. Most of them were Iowa Hawkeye or Indiana Fever fans. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You came from Canada to... Saskatchewan, Canada. <laughs> That's a long walk. We drove 23 hours. Whoa, hold on a second. 2C, I'm going to guess. Let me guess. Caitlin Clark. And let's not even get started on the Chicago sky. They're not drawing much attention either. It's just the way it is when it comes to video views. The Fever are outpacing the NFL, which is impressive, and content related to Caitlin Clark gets five to ten times. More views than anything NFL related. I'm not sure what that says, but the interest is clearly there. Honestly, I think work really hard, um, you know, have dreams, chase them, um, but also like there's going to be moments that are really hard and there's going to be moments that are great. Uh, that's what every single person goes through in their life, whether you want to be a professional athlete, whether whatever you want to do, there's going to be moments of hardship and then a lot of amazing moments. But that's what makes, you know, the moments of really great time. Like, that's what makes it so amazing. So um, I think don't let anybody tell you can't do something. You can achieve whatever you want in life. Um, I think especially for young girls, like have confidence. I think that's something a lot of young girls struggle with is confidence. And lucky enough, like, you know, I have parents that instill confidence in me. I grew up playing basketball with the boys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for daily updates.